Men are thinking numbers. They are thinking economics. Women are thinking comfort, nurture, beauty, stuff like that. Active listening will diffuse a conflict. The two things that people look for in a relationship is to be seen and to be heard. Today I'm going to answer a question that has been asked and the question is what do we do when we cannot agree on a solution? It is normal for two people not to see things the same way and there are many times you will get into a gridlock where your partner sees the solution as A and you see the solution as B and there is no compromise. It's, it's difficult for you to get to a compromise. So that happens a lot within a marriage relationship. So the question is, what do we do when my perception, my perspective, my opinion, my solution makes 100% sense to me, but my partner does not see it that way and their solution makes 100% sense to them and I don't see it. Now, I'm going to share with you a simple way that you can navigate that. And it is called, what is the C? Remember, there is the A and there is the B. Can we create a C? Can we move to C? And where we are moving to C, C becomes the third option. So there is option number one, which is uh, mine. And there is option number two, which is my partner. But we are unable to agree on either one. So what we are going to do is to create a third option. The third option is going to take the good points of my partner's solution and the good points of my solutions and we put them together and we see whether we can create a third option. So we want to buy a house, for instance, and or we want to rent a house, we want to move. And uh, we go and we look around and my partner loves a different house and the, the house that I love is also different. So now we are unable to agree. What we need to do is to ask each other, I'm curious, what is it about this house that you love? Tell me everything you love. And then my partner is also able to ask me, I'm curious, what is it that you love about this one? We take those two things about each of the house, we put them together and we say, is it possible for us to find a house that could meet both our needs? It's a simple solution and it can really create traction towards moving away from the conflict so that you guys can move forward. So an example is I may be loving the house that I love because of location, because of the roads, because of the proximity to wherever. My partner may be loving the house that we saw because of the cost and we need now to come together and see because it's very important for him because he's the one and, uh, and now here we are coming from fe female to male how we see things. Men are thinking numbers. They are thinking economics. Women are thinking comfort, nurture, beauty, stuff like that. So what we need to do, let's put them together because they are both important. And then we say, can we find a house in a location that is comfortable for my wife and in a place that me as the man can afford? So this is the budget and this is the place. So if we can get to the unspoken motivation, the unspoken needs, the values that cause us to choose one thing over the other, then we can resolve that conflict. In fact, that conflict is resolvable. Now, the other thing that is important is problem solving. Problem solving model, number one, you've got to define the problem. And once you define the problem, you agree that this is the problem. Now, in that space, you might realize that you have two problems or three problems, separate them. So say problem number one, number two, number three. And then you go to second step, which is brainstorm the possible solution for each problem. Again, separate the problems. If you figure out that it is not just one problem, it's two. And uh, in this case of looking for a house, we have the issue of the cost of the rent. We have the issue of location. We also have the issue of nature or comfort. Those are three issues. So separate them so that now you can be able to problem solve through them. And then number three, do the pros and the cons of each, looking at the pros and the cons of all the solutions, and we choose the best case scenario, but we, we can also do a hierarchy of this is the best op option, number one, second best option, third best option, and now we implement. And we tell each other, this is not written in stone, 
if we go here and we implement this and it doesn't work, then we can regroup and look at option two and look at option three. That way, you stay away from emotional fights and you go into the logical space so that now you are not emotionally entering the conflict space, but you are coming in objectively because already you have allowed each other to be heard. And once you hear each other, it is much more easier for you to identify what the problem is and then run with the problem. The other thing that I want to bring to your attention is the skill of active listening. Active listening will diffuse a conflict faster than these other ways that we do it. What, what happens with uh, active listening is that you are more interested in your partner's way of thinking and why they think the way they do. It is what we say, how did you get here? Now, this is what I'm experiencing from you. But before we continue on, can you give me the back story? What were you feeling? What were you experiencing? What were you fearing? What were you hoping for? Because if I do that, then we are focused more on you who brought the conflict so that I get to understand before I defend myself, before I counterattack, before I counter blame. I am focused on listening to where you are coming from. Now, if I do that, what happens is that I stay in control of my emotion. My emotional intelligence is top because now I am aware of myself. I am self-regulating. I'm not just speaking and number three i am aware of you and i'm looking at you and i'm saying it seems like you're very passionate about this i want to hear more so i'm more focused on you in this space where we are talking about something that is important to you so i am reflecting back what you are saying to them is what i have heard you say is that is what we call reflecting back. That's a skill in active listening that diffuses the conflict. So I am feeling my emotions. I'm feeling triggered to feel anxious, angry, attacked and all that. But I choose to suppress my feelings right now to give you feedback about what I have heard you say. So now I'm validating you. You are the one who brought the complaint. I'm validating you. I'm giving you attention. And we are dealing with how you are feeling before I enter my feelings into the conversation. So if I give you feedback by reflecting and I say, is that what you meant for me to hear? And then the sender can give feedback and say, exactly, that's how I meant. Then the, the receiver can also do something that we call clarifying. And they can be able to say, I heard you say this and that, and I'm wondering, do you mean such and such? You see, so it is not me explaining myself. It is me clarifying what you really mean. So that I make sure by the time we are finished with this exploration of this problem, I have completely understood you. You feel understood because the two things that people look for in a relationship is to be seen and to be heard. If you offer me that, as your spouse, we are in a good place. We will, I will feel that you value me and I will feel respected. And then now we can resolve issues because I experience goodwill from you. Because you are listening, you are willing, you are interested to know how I'm feeling, what I'm thinking. Instead of you deflating, there is a difference between diffusing and deflating. Deflating is where you go on a tangent of defensiveness, a tangent of atawebe ulifanya, which is now the counter blaming, the shifting of blame. That is deflating. You are walking away from the issue and you are creating a tangent. But the person who diffuses is the person who says, I hear you, I get you, I can see where you are coming from. That is diffusing conflict. If we do that, we are going to have better management of our conflicts. After I have listened to you and we have agreed what your issue is, then I can now talk about my experience listening to you. We need to remind each other as couples that conflict is opportunity not to end the marriage, not to create pain, 
it is the opportunity to grow. It is the opportunity to expand our emotional resilience, our mental resilience. It is an opportunity to grow as a person as we walk through these uh, issues of conflict management. There is a, a question that has been asked before about timing. Please don't try to resolve conflict after 8 p.m. People are too tired. We cannot be able to do logical thinking at 8 p.m. We've been up for 12 hours. It is going to be difficult to do that. We are tired. We want to rest. Don't bring up issues then. We also want to say that you do not bring an issue that you want logical talk when you are too emotional. Take care of yourself first and then bring the issue at a time where you are not triggered because when you are triggered you are human there are some things you will say self-control will be out the window and there is also compassion will not be there because you are in ego space you are only thinking about your comfort and yourself and that is not going to help the relationship it may help you but the relationship is gonna lose we can disagree without then throwing each other under the bus so i hope this video has been very helpful to you and i look forward to serving you personally as you reach out to us if you have any questions feel free to put it in the com comments and i look forward to continuing to work with you continue to live by design